Right, I'll uh, start off by uh, just going through the bits we're going to need. M most importantly, <coughs> is a reloading manual. Inside, it says all different calibers, and for each caliber, that will give you the the type of powder you need, uh, the load recommended for that, the maximum loads you recommended for that caliber for that powder bullet combination. And also in the front, there's a quick uh, user guide to how you to use things and best sort of a glossary for the products that they make and different types of bullets that is the most important thing that will tell you um, all about your pressures you're expecting when you w work up to your maximum loads that'll tell you your maximum load so obviously you know you need to buy a decent one of them preferably I like to get two one that covers the manufacturer from of the powder and also one made by the uh, manufacturer of the bullet Anything else is uh, sort of um, best hearsay, hearsay um, information. But these, they spend a lot of time, a lot of money producing these. So believe what they tell you inside. All right. That will also tell you in the, um, like here, if I can get to one, like 338 wind mag here. That will tell you if you look, when you get your copy. That will tell you the COL tested out. That's the complete overall length for your bullet. That's the seat and depth. Um, when you when we work out your seat and depth, you have to be wary of if you're using a magazine that the bullet the round you make will fit in the magazine, and also um, your seat and depth relative to performance. I reckon that's the most important thing and something you must mustn't skip money on. Right, moving on. Some of the reloading components you're going to need powder in this case you can see I've got a tub of Hodgson's Varget not necessarily the powder I'm going to use for the uh, demonstration but just one I got to hand to show you what I need moving on you can see we're going to need the rounds these are 243 once fired commercial rounds it's best to keep your brass saves you buying brass and you can see they've been shot because the primer has been dented uh, so uh, when we move on I'll show you how to prepare them primers they come in boxes of a hundred. Uh, they're individually wrapped, obviously, because that's a safety issue. In this case, they're from Federal. Uh, you can get large primers and also small primers. Uh, small primers are generally for pistol or pistol calibers, but not always. Uh, some cases now you can get like 308 small primers or 308 large primers. So you have to be wary of when you're buying stuff, what size primers you want. Also, whether they're Magnum or large rifle. So uh, going back to reload manual, that will tell you nine times out of ten what you need for that Pacific. Um, right. Here we can see, I'll point using, let me get something to point with. Here you can see we've got two dies and a shell holder. Now the shell holder will go in the press of what that is. And the press is what makes all your rounds. That's where you seat your bullets and also size your cases. Anyway, moving back to the dies. Here we can see we've got a um, full length size and die made by Lee with a deprimer inside. When we move on a little bit I'll uh, show you the full function of these. Here we've got the seating die where you put the bullet, once you've got the primer, the powder and the case ready, you put the bullet in and this will actually seat, it, seat the bullet down. As you can see here we've got the shell holder. As I explained the shell holder fits in like so I don't know if you can see on this shell holder is a number two now that is the uh, number two on your um, you'll find a list of what shell holders go with what calibers that's the bolt face so number two does all 308 bolt faces uh, for something like 223 you need a four number four okay uh, moving back on again We've got a lube pad. Just open this up. With a case of some lube, you put some lube on here and then roll your cases along it to lubricate them just before sizing. Because obviously when you're sizing the cases, there's a lot of pressure expanded on them, so you need lubrication. In this case I've got some 6mm, because 243 being 6mm, I've got some Nosler ballistic tip, they're the bullet tips, okay? 
Right, moving on to some of the case prep stuff. Here we've got bristly brush. This is for in cleaning inside of the necks prior to loading. Okay, and then here we have a sort of a steely brush thing, clean for primer, cleaning the primer pockets. Uh, once you're deprimed, you'll just clean out the primer pocket, take out all the carbon before you reprime with new brass. Funnel for pouring powder into the cases. The white thing is a case holder. And at the back we've got some the second most important after the manual piece of equipment, set scales. These are beam scales and RCBS or Reading, Lyman or considerable makes are, you know, spend your money, get a decent set because you've got to trust them. They've got to be repeatable. So take your time, take your time when you're there and get them nice and level and play with them first to get used to them. Okay? Just move a couple of bits out and I'll bring some more in. Now this piece of equipment here is what they call an auto prime. Okay. That's it, you can see it like that. There's a shell holder in here where you put your case in like so. And by the by the uh, attributes of a prep cam system, uh, this bit will hold primers and that seats your primer in the bottom of your case. So you put your shell hold, uh, case in like that and that would seat a primer. Okay. Um, it's one of the che cheapest primers out there and arguably one of the best because you can actually feel the primer hit the bottom of the case head. I mean, you, when you seat your primers, you don't want any gap between the primer and the, the actual case. Um, and lastly, it's not necessary, but I like to use a powder trickler. When I've weighed my powder and I'm getting that last little tenth of a grain or half a grain, you can just fill this up with powder and just trickle a little bit in. So you'll need, I would say you won't need one, but that makes the job a lot easier. I think that's everything. Oh, one last bit of equipment we've got to cover. Let me just clear some out. Set of calipers. Okay. This will be used for measuring your case overall length or your overall length, um, your magazine length. Whether they're digital or dial type, invest in a set of these. They are a must. Okay, guys, I think that's everything. That we're done. Powder. Uh, bullets, shell holder, primer. If there's anything I've missed on the way, um, I'll bring it on to the camera and just explain it for you. Okay, guys, so that's everything you'll need. Um, with regards to the loader manual, buy one, and I suggest if you, you know, you're new to reloading as this uh, video is designed for, I suggest you read that first before you even go anywhere near your press. Because you need to understand the basics. Hopefully with the video I'll, I'll explain the basics. But you need to get your head around just a few safety features. Okay. Cheers. Before you go any further. What you need to do. Is check your brass. Make sure it's safe. So what you're looking for around the case neck here. Is any splits. Creases. Um, if you use them range pickups, you know, if somebody else has used them down the range, just make sure they're generally good condition. Any indentations or splits along the bottom of the base. And these circular splits here, which would indicate a case head separation. Um, as you could spend all this time shooting them, uh, all your time uh, reloading them and then shooting them. This is a basic, uh, it's an easiest thing to do. Basically, you want anything you're going to reload, you want to physically, you know, make sure there's no crud inside, no splits, as I say, no dents, and they're generally in very good condition. Once you've got that out of the way, uh, you uh, can proceed to uh, deprime. Okay, guys, this is the full length die with the deprimer. You can see the depriming pin in there, and inside. Uh, the case will slip inside after we've lubricated it and it'll be full full length sized um, I'll just try and show you how to set these up if you bring the ram up let me if I can slide this down right what you want to do is just loosen the, the locking ring off. This is the locking ring. 
round the die, back it all the way off. And you want to bring the die down. As you can see, I'm twisting it down until make sure the ram is all the way up. The bottom of the die. Let me just focus and see if we can see this clearly. It's touch, just touching. And you see it coming down, just touching the top of the shell holder. We've got the shell holder in. Make sure you've got the shell holder in first, otherwise you're going to be mild out. Okay, once that's just kissing it, we lift the die, the ram, take the ram down. We don't let it bang like that. And then we give the die a quarter of a turn more. And then we hold it in place using the locking ring. We tighten it up. Now the locking ring on the inside has got no ring. So that shouldn't move anymore, okay? So just bring the shell holder back up and make sure it's okay. That looks fine. So that's all nice and tight. Right, now we've got a loop pad. As I said before, what we would have done originally is got some of the case loop too. Spread it on there and let it soak in. This is quite sticky, so I mean, it's, I'll just put a drop on there, but you don't need loads. Okay. Right, we're going to do uh, three cases today on film, so we don't put some lube like that, some around the top. Use your fingers and a little bit inside. So that's one. Because obviously, when you're stretching things, that needs. Lubrication, otherwise they get tight and you can end up, uh, there's enough force to break dies, get cases stuck. So that's two now lubed up. Okay, so we'll go back to a press. Try and do as best I can. Case goes in. Don't know what that's doing there. Forget about that. Okay, so the case is in. It goes into the die. That'll go slightly tight, that's where the resizing is. You can hear the primer drop out. And that case has now been resized, okay? So the primer is out. And the shoulders have been set back, the neck has been resized. Shoulders here get pushed back slightly because uh, every time you take a shot, all the brass goes forward in the chamber, so they get set back to the what they call Sammy spec, which is uh, like an industry standard. And the neck is um, every when you shoot, the necks get blown out so it's loose, so that gets retightened to the desired tightness. Okay, we'll just move on to get another one. If I keep quiet this time, you'll hear the primer drop out. You hear that ping? That's the primer dropping out. You see the primer appeared here, okay? Usually there's a tray that goes round here for the um, press so you don't end up with uh, primers everywhere. We'll do our last one. I'll just move in a little bit so you've got focus. The primer's dropped out on the floor. Okay, so that's three. That's now three sized cases ready for case cleaning. Um, we'll clean the primer hole, primer pocket rather, and uh, we'll reprime them, put some powder in, seat them, and then go and use them. One little thing I forgot to do, and I'll tell you about now, is to uh, chamfer the inside and just chamfer the outside of the neck of the case. What this does is aids uh, feeding into your chamber, rounds off the nasty rough bits around the edge here, and also if you chamfer the inside of the neck, it helps when you seat the bullet, slides in nicely. It's a little chamfer tool, so it's literally like that on the outside. A couple of turns on the inside, and as that's done, just knock off the crud, that's nice and rounded, you can go over it again, you're just cutting off, you know, not a lot at all, so that's all, 
just makes a nice lead edge. Okay, moving on, we'll uh, just click our primer cleaner pocket here. As you can see, it's all carbon. Can you see that on there? It's all carbon on the primer pocket where the primer was fired. So we just, as you can see, it's nice and shiny. Last one. Okay, moving on to the case neck. The brush, that's all you need. That just gets rid of all the carbon or any cleaning fluids that are in there or any lubrication. Okay, so I consider these rounds now ready for priming. Right, you can see we've got three primers here on the priming tool tray. We've got the number two shell holder in, which is the three or bolt face for two, four, three. Right, the primers need to be a certain way up. They need to be, this is the, if you can imagine sitting in the case, that's the bit you'd see, and that's the inside bit. You need the inside bit facing up, okay? Obviously, as you seat it, it needs to be that way. If you tip a few on the tray, and you've got some the wrong way, just give them a little spin. And the tray is designed so they all tip over the right way. Okay, so that is, they're ready to go. Lid on. A good tip, if you've got a lot, is to put a bit of sticky tape around here. Because if you're like me, they are you're likely to jump out. Right, so what you do is you bring them around. So you've got one in the, ready to go. Okay, case in. And then give it a squeeze. One prime case. Okay, next one ready to go. Now, one thing I must mention while you're doing this never ever point the case towards you when you're priming, and always, and I mean always, wear safety glasses because you are dealing here with a potentially explosive object. The primer's got enough force to uh, maybe not kill you, but certainly hurt, either take an eye out or do you some permanent damage, okay? So, case in, and as you can see, I point it away. I don't know if I'm not, I can't really do this on camera, but seat it, I can just feel the primer hit the inside of the case. Job done. Shake it, give it a shake, make the last one is in the primer ready to go. Give it a squeeze, yep. There you go, and you've got three nice, clean, primed cases. They are now ready for powder. Uh, and uh, that, that's the next part of the operation. Right, I'm just doing, uh, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm just going to show you um, some print for my reloading book. Well, one of mine, I've got several, and you, you always compare the differences between. Okay, you can see here, this is the 243 section. It'll give you the weight of the bullet, 90 grain, the type of bullet, which in this case is a 6mm spare port, sub point, which is a sort of a generic hunting bullet. That'll tell you the ballistic coefficient. If you're going to go down the long range route, you'll need to know that. Um, the complete overall length tested at. This is what their complete length, the complete overall length of their bullet was when they tested it in their firearms. Um, if you go up, actually onto the section page, you can actually say they'll give you the trim length. Um, as I said before, when cases are fired, they move forward, so at some point you'll need to trim them back in length, okay? But um, there's something three or four far ends down. Um, they'll also give you the data that they used and had with regards to their testing. So you can see what I'm trying to emphasize is here is what works in their gun may not necessarily work in your gun, okay? Even though it's the same caliber, using the same powder, the same bullet, same powder weight, same case, primer, whatever. Okay, we'll just go back to the previous page. Right. 
on the left hand side you can see re 19 aa they're all different types of powder okay for that specific bullet this is their load data what you can see there is a a bold figure and a faint figure now the faint figure is a safe minimum if you go below that you can you can run into big pressure problems again okay you can get things like bullets sticking up barrels and that's not good okay now the bold figure that's the one you need to watch this is the safe maximum amount of powder in grains it says it in grains white grains that's the safe maximum okay so once you're doing your loo development you start 10 percent under that and then slowly work in whether a third of a grain or half a grain increments watching for pressure signs okay the pressure signs will be things like split cases um, loose primers sticky primers when you when you uncham your gun the bolt is hard to lift that's the sticky primer okay all these signs are signs of overpressure, too much pressure so then if it's not a safe load what you need to do if you start to do them is back your load off a little bit okay beside it you'll see 2988 that's the muzzle velocity uh, they experience with their uh, gun muzzle velocities will differ because if you've got a longer barrel it may produce a bit more velocity because you've got a little bit more time for the pa you know powder to burn not always but if if you go from like a 22 inch barrel up to a 26 the velocity can change a little bit okay so it's all different types of powder listed there they all give the safe and minimum load requirements so it's it's up to you to go into your supplier and see what powder he stocks and what he recommends and see if you can correlate it to some of this day danger here right if you see a anywhere a compressed load um, there's, I don't think there's any on here but I'm just reading some of the print down the bottom here where it says compressed load now a compressed load is when you've got 100% um, or 101% volume of the case loaded with powder so you, when you push when you see the bullet you're actually squishing the actual powder down this is not always good this can lead to overpressure again so be wary of that I think if you're starting to get loads like that you're probably best to find a faster powder okay obviously um, I haven't explained it yet some powders are designed for certain calibers uh, the big big calibers like the 50 caliber 338 the 300 wind mag and them sort of calibers use a slightly slower burning powder and things like the 223 the 217 uh, the B or the 219B and um, triple 250, 243 uses faster powders because they're smaller case, um, so they um, burn quicker. Okay, like I said about the primers, you go to your load data and that will explain it. Right, we'll uh, work out and get some uh, powder weighed and some bullets filled. Right, okay, we've got scales zeroed as you can see. The that's the end result of zero, so the lines match up. You can tweak that a little bit. It's actually easier with the camera, actually. You can see it better. Make sure you've got the pan on, because that'll affect the power on it. You can see I'm using Varget here, or I could be using 140. Um, I'm not going to state what powder I'm using, and I'm not going to give you the charge weight, because that is something I'm not here to do. Um, you need to refer to uh, published little data for that. Okay, I'm just here to show you how to do it. So for argument's sake, I should be using one of these powders. I don't know which, and I'm, I won't tell you the charge weight. Okay, I've got my bullet tips. Same again. They're six mil, two, four, three. That's all you need to know. Um, my, the, I know my little data is safe, but I shan't be showing you. Um, I won't be telling you what weight they are. Okay, I'm here to just show you how to. Uh, make the blink and things right first of all you can well you're now gonna <laughs> thinking about it you're now probably gonna see um, my load how much I'll load it but here you can do units of grains as a hundred fifty or fifty forty thirty you know it's obvious here you can go with 
Well, they're the 10, you know, like here you've got the 0 to 1 or 0 to 9, and then underneath you've got a little thing. If I can get the camera on that. There's a little lock on that here that spins round and they're tenths of a grain, okay? Right, so going back to my zero. I know my zero is good. I'll set in my desired weight, charge weight. Right. You can see I've just put a, an amount of powder into the scoop. I just put that on my scales and see where they come. I'm a little bit out yet. Now using my powder trickler. I'll trickle some in there until I get close to the... You can see the... If I keep that on the indicator. Now as I trickle, you'll see the indicator come up. Same with Nelly Gotten. Take your time here because you don't want to put too much in because there's a faff getting that all out. The object is to line the two lines up as best you can. That'll do me. Right, so that's the powder. Charge, weighed, uh, whatever our desired weight is. Okay. Right, we've got the last one to fill. I'll just show you me filling that up. That's the last one. So it's a funnel on. Powder in. And then all cases are now loaded with uh, powder. What you would now do is visually check each one. I like to use a torch. Make sure that they all look correct. They look evenly loaded. You haven't got one that's... Um, too full because what you can make the mistake is loading too much powder into one or even double charging one okay then obviously you're going to end up with a potentially very dangerous situation okay we don't need the scoop anymore so i'll get rid of that next part of the operation as you can see i can't turn it off because the powder will come out they've been primed uh, they've been sized they've got powder in of the correct charge weight we now move back to our press and uh, seat the bullets for the final part of the operation. Here we are, we, this is the seating die. As per usual, we put it in the top of the press, screw it down, bring the ram up, just go down. Now we bring the ram all the way up, we bring the die, and just go down a little bit more of the camera so you can see what's going on. Bring the die all the way down till it just kisses the kisses the face of the shell holder. Drop the ram, then we give it one turn, a quarter of a turn extra. Okay, then we lock it off with a lock and ring. As you can see me no down. Now Just lock them, so that's all that's nice and snug, all right? You only got to be finger tight, you ain't got to wrench it off. Moving back up to the top of the die, there's an adjustable depth seating thread up top. The further out you screw it, the further out of the case that you seat your bullet, making it a longer bullet. Now obviously the further in, the... the the deeper that the bullet will sit in the case. Okay? With regards to the, the seating depth, you need to refer back to your manual for seating depths. Yeah, there is another way you can also figure out the seating depth using an overall length gauge, yeah, which is, uh, you can actually see on one of my other videos that shows you how to use that. So, um, once again, as per the powder and the type of powder in the bullet, I'm not going to tell you what the seating depth there. This is just purely to show you how to use these things, okay? Right, we'll just slide this down to the business end. Right. 
run case with powder primed, ready to go. Okay, one bullet on top. That's it. Like me, you'll drop them every single time. Okay. So you just guide it in slowly into the die. All the way up. You'll find a, you'll feel a slight resistance as it, as the bullet is, put, not not forced but pushed into the case neck. And then when you withdraw it, draw it, you should have a nice loaded round. Okay. Um, when I say your overall length, I'm talking about. Let me just pan out a bit. I'm talking about like that, okay? That's overall length, complete overall length. Now another way you can measure is from the O drive, but that's um, a little bit further down the road from this sort of basic stuff. Okay, we'll go for another one. Another one in the shell holder. Try and get it without dropping it this time. Spill powder everywhere. Can you see that? Make sure the case is still in there. Another bullet produced. Ready to go. Now, while I've got a chance, just on this last one, I'm going to give you a little tip here. This is more advanced than basic reloading, but this is a little tip I'm going to give you. When you see your bullet, when you feel it, you'll feel it on the press handle, start to engage in the case neck. Don't seat it all the way, just seat it like that, withdraw it, spin the case around 180 degrees, and then fully seat it. Okay, it makes absolutely no difference to the seating depth or anything like that. All it does is helps centralise the bullet to the case properly okay it further centralizes it makes the concentricity a little bit better okay once you get into your reloading there's a lot more you can do to them but that is if we've primed it we resized it we put the powder in and we seat the bullet these are now ready to go thank you very much and this is the end result perfectly f formed, usable, uh, recycled brass. Um, possibly more accurate than factory stuff. I'm not going to say that because the effect, you know, you'll get back in dividends what you put into yourself. Um, there's a certain satisfaction with killing or target shooting with stuff you've produced yourself. Um, it should work out, I would have said, a bit 60 to 80 percent cheaper. Um, also, if you're shooting an, uh, an unstandard calibre, like um, like one of the Ackleys or one of the Ackley derivatives or one of the neck up or neck down calibres, you'll need to uh, reload. Otherwise, you've got no, you'll have no brass to shoot. So, uh, hope you've enjoyed this. And if you've got any questions, please uh, either PM me, email me, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.